Lord, everyone. I am Apostle Bernadette World of Bernadette World Global Ministries, and I want to welcome you to an evening with the Apostle, and I am the Apostle. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I am Apostle Bernadette World of Bernadette World Global Ministries and Take It By Force Apostolic Healing and Deliverance Ministries. I want to welcome each of you to our weekly broadcast and evening with the Apostle. And I praise God for you. I know that it was not by coincidence that you were turning your television dial or your uh, social media dial, your internet dial, whatever source of media that you use, it was not by coincidence that you stopped here on tonight. And so I thank you because on tonight we have a dynamic man of God that has a powerful, powerful, powerful testimony and ministry that the Lord has given him, that the Lord has birthed out of him. And so we're going to um, just glorify God for his presence and for his authority and for the mandate that God has placed on him and through him. And so we are brought by way of Preach the Word Worldwide Network with Apostle Marilyn Todman and Bishop Charles Todman. We thank them for them allowing us the platform and we thank you for tuning in. So now without further ado, help me welcome Minister Willie Ross, Prisoners of Faith <laughs> Ministry. God bless you, my God. It's so good to have you here on this evening. Uh, we bless the Lord for your presence. Now, we know that uh, we uh, had planned and scheduled for you to be on before, um, but life happens, and so we had to reschedule a couple of times. But we were both determined that we were going to get you here because we know that you have a word from the Lord. And because you have a word from the Lord, we know that lives and hearts are going to be changed. Amen. Glory be to God. So we welcome you, and um, we want to just have you to introduce yourself uh, to our listening audience on tonight. Well, my name is Willie Ross, um, Minister Willie Ross, um, from Jacksonville, Florida, um, born and raised. Um, I thank God for LTT um, B Ministry, um, and thank God for Apostle World for having me on the show. Amen, amen, glory be to God. LTTV Ministries, yeah. you are the third person that I have had on my show from LTTV Ministries. I'm telling you, God is doing a great work yeah. in that ministry. And I learned of LTTV Ministries by way of you. You brought me to the ministry and I've been coming ever since. And so I bless the Lord because it was truly a move of God. Yeah. Amen. And so tell us, what is the pastor's uh, name and the overseer's of LTTV Ministries. Um, Apostle Val, uh, Apostle Lamont, Valcina Lamont, and Pastor Tony um, Wilson. Amen, amen, amen. And his beautiful wife, we cannot yes. forget. And the first lady. <laughs> lady Matt Lena Lena yeah, Wilson. Matt Lena Wilson. Yes. I know she has kind of a difficult name. <laughs> But we bless God for their work and for their diligence. Yes. Um, they truly, they truly have a heart after God, yes. and so we bless God for them. Amen. And so, um, if you will, I would just like for you to just spend some time and talk about the ministry um, that God has given you and share a bit of your testimony. Okay, first, I want to correct one thing. I want to correct elect, elect Bishop Tony Wilson. That's right. That is so yeah. true. He has um, he has been elevated in the Lord and in the ministry, and so uh, he is now elect bishop. Yes, praise God. Come on, listening audience, give God some praise and give God some glory. Amen. Amen. Yes, um, Prisoner of Faith Ministry was birthed in while I was in prison. Um, 2002, I got in some trouble. I was selling drugs and uh, got in trouble. But in that, in me doing what I was doing, I was having dreams of going to prison. And those dreams, I met a, I met a man named Jeff Walker, but I didn't know his name at the time. 
But when I got to prison and, and got well, when I got my time and got to prison, um, I met Death Row Walker and he started working with me in the ministry. He started teaching me the Bible, started teaching me how to how to understand who God was and what God was in my life at the time. And um as he was teaching me, um, I was going to come to going in every night and dreaming. And as, as I dreamed, I used to dream about this 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 ministry, but I was dreaming prisoners of faith ministry and I never knew what it was. And I went to him one day and I talked to him about it. He said, that's your ministry. And I was like, huh? He's like, yeah, that's your ministry. You just got to have an understanding of what God is trying to speak to you about that ministry or what he's trying to use you to do to work that ministry. And I really didn't know, but I had an understanding of what I wanted to do um, when I got out of prison. I wanted to go to kids and, and talk to kids about about the about not doing some of the things that I done. And you know, and, and he was like, you know, you have a testimony. And when he said that, I started dreaming about the things that I used to do and the things that I done in the past. And the things that I was doing that I was going to do in the future. And that's why I came up with Prisoner of Faith Ministry. And Prisoner of Faith Ministry is not being in prison. It's not about being in prison, but it's about being in prison when we when I was in the world, I was I worked for the God, I worked for the devil. Amen. Every Amen. day. And I was a prisoner of his. Yes. And whatever whatever needed to be done, whatever I, I, I had to do, I did it with the utmost I'm talking about whatever I needed to do, I did it. You gave it to bed. Yes. And once I started turning my life over to Christ. I wanted to do the same thing for God. Yeah. I wanted to do whatever I can to please God. Hallelujah. That was about being a prisoner of my faith. See, I was, my faith was with the devil at one time. Yeah. But once I turned my life over to Christ, my faith became with God. And once God started living in me and I started doing the things of the wrong God, I wanted to do everything that I can to make God I mean make people know who God was and what God had done in my life. Yeah. And Giving my testimony on how I used to do the things in the world was one of the things. And so I started getting some of my friends to come in, people that done changed their life on, on from from the streets and, you know, and, and got saved. I, I started inviting them to come in to give testimony. And as we did that, uh, <clears throat> things changed. But it was, I, when I first got out, let me go back a few steps. When I first got out, I had a hard time. I thought I had to have money. I thought I had to do things to get it to to, to, to get this ministry all the um, off the ground. I thought right. I had to have some money to do it. Right. But what I needed to do is get up under somebody that was doing the same thing that I wanted to do. And I met a lady named Pastor Pinkerton, and she introduced me to Apostle Lamar. At the time, it was Pastor Lamar, Amen. and I was the only man in our group, and we went around and you know, I'm around a lot of places giving our testimony. When I tell you, it was a lot of women that was giving their, their testimony. I used to kind of, kind of, I didn't want to give my testimony sometimes because behind these women because they had some powerful testimony. Yes. <laughs> but at the same time, once I learned, I was learning from her, and as I learned from her, I was applying it to the things that I needed to do, and I got on the Temple of Hope with Pastor Washington. And Prisoner of Faith took off. Prisoner of Faith Ministry took off. And it's been in LTV, in LTTV Ministries, God has really blessed the ministry with Prisoner of Faith Ministry. And the people that has I have asked to come in to give testimony has been powerful. And God has been showing up and showing out. And the thing is, everybody have a testimony. Yes. Whether it's being in the world or being a man or woman of God, you have a testimony oh, yes. even even as a man or woman of God because God has brought you out of some things. Yes. Why you why you became a man or woman of God? Yes. Once you became a man or woman of God, you will go through some things. So God has to bring you out of those things. So you still have a testimony. But like I said, when I was in the world, God brought me out of a bunch of things. Um, and I thank God for it. Amen. One of one of the things that people thought I would never be I, I would never 
be on the street again, when I caught my murder charge. And I had a grandmama that prayed and, and, and always told me, God has a plan for my life. Yeah. But she, she introduced me to Psalms 51. And I used to say that song every day. Um, I used to read it every day. And she said, you, you, you ain't gonna get over 10 years. Talking about 46 years to life. But God. 46 years to life. They, this, this is what they were saying. My, my, my. And when it was all said and done, I got six years. I got my, four my. years in prison and two on paper. My, my, my. Come on, get God for a prayer. That believed and had trust in God. Yeah. That yeah. God was going to change things. Yeah. So God can change anybody. Yes, He can. He changed me. He can change yes, you. He can. Yes, He can. Yes, he can. Hallelujah. That is so powerful and so anointed. And man of God, while you were talking about how God, God had his hand on you, even when you were in the midst of the things that you were going, that you were in, uh, like you say, living for the devil, you gave the devil your best. Yeah. You gave him your all. And one thing about God that I always tell the people in my ministry is that God is not looking for no punks. God is not looking for people that got a, 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 a soft bite ball. He wants people that can stand firm and that can stand strong and be able to decree and declare the works of the Lord. And so what God does is God, God handpicks those who are going to be soldiers in his army. And he handpicks us while we are yet in sin. And then the ones that he handpicked are the ones who are vibrant in the sin that they're in. So while you was giving the devil your best, God was preparing you so that you can give him your best. Because he could look at you and say, this is a strong person. This person right here, he's doing, he's going, as they say nowadays, 100. He's doing 100 for the devil. So I know he's going to do 100 for me. And so um, glory be to God. So we bless the Lord because he had his hand on you while you were yet in the world. And then the prisoner being in a, in a, in a physical prison cell, that was a test. That was a test for you to show God that yet I'm in captivity. I'm still praying my mind. Yeah. And I'm still going, when I get up out of here, I'm going to dedicate my life to the Lord. And I'm going to stay on the Lord's side. I'm going to be a prisoner for the Lord. And so as you were talking, man of God, I, 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 I saw a large gathering of people that is going to be connected to the ministry that God is birthing out of you. He is Amen. yet doing work. Amen. But it's going to be a large problem because you have a dynamic voice in your community. And so God is going to use that voice for your good yes. and for his glory. Amen. And so um, what is it that God has laid on your heart as far as ministry? Um, so that you could, because he gives us all something in our heart that we can use to be uh, winners for the body of Christ, to win the law. Uh, so just tell us what is it that God has laid on your heart that um, that that you see you doing in the near future to get those souls to come in, going out in the neighborhood. And you know, I grew up in the rough part of that, lot of home, Washington Heights. Um, in these areas was two of the worst areas. Most yeah, lot of home um, in uptown was the worst, the number one crime area in that time. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Washington Heights was was another place where it was a bad area at the same time. And but between the both of them, because I was staying with my grandfather in Lodging and mm -hmm. going to visit my mom in Washington Heights, mm -hmm. and I used to tell people that I had the best of two uh, the best of two worlds. Right. <laughs> and um, at that, you learn. I'm saying you 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 get to know people. Yeah. Yeah. And in, from those places that I was at, in the neighborhoods that I go in, those same people that knew me from those two places know me in the neighborhoods that I go in. Yeah. And so that's, I used to do it one time when I was in um, Temple of Hope. I used to go in the neighborhoods when nobody else was going in. Right. And, and it's good to be able to teach behind the four walls and tell everybody about who Christ is and what Christ is. But most of the people that's in church are already saved. Yeah, yeah. The people that need to be saved are the people that's out there, that's carrying nah, guns, nah, nah. that's out there, that's prostituting, that's selling drugs, that's 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 looking for somebody. Like yeah. I was, I, I was looking for something, yeah, something different, yeah. But didn't know how to grab because I didn't have a father figure. Right. 
And there's a lot of kids, there's a lot of kids out there don't have a father figure or a mother figure. Right. That's grandmama raised or, or mama raised or even daddy raised. Right. So you know, going in these neighborhoods and talking to people, that's that's one of the things that I want to do. And you know, and, 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 and it's, it's, it's not going to just take me to do it, it's going to take the people that's around me that, yeah. and, and we go in the neighborhood and yeah. talk to people. Because there's so many people that's scared to go in the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not one of those people. I'm, yeah. I can go in, I feel like I can go in any neighborhood and talk to anybody Amen. about Christ. And yeah. I can hear the Lord, I'm not going to cut you off a minute ago, but I can hear the Lord say he's going to give you a team that's not going to be afraid to go into the neighborhood with you. Um, because iron sharpening iron. And that's what the Bible tells us. So you've got to have people that's going to be connected to you. That when you do go into those areas, that they're not going to be timid. If you remember the story of Gideon in the Bible, Gideon had an army. And and, the, and they, before they went to battle, the Lord told Gideon, he said, everybody that's with you is not going to be right. not going to be for you. because." And so he told me, he said, you got to get rid of some people. So the first thing you do is you tell those who are afraid to go home and Gideon lost over half his army just off of the people that was afraid. So what the Lord is saying to you, man of God, is those who are afraid, those who are timid, those who are having second thoughts, they don't know. They if, if they can't share that vision with you, you lead them home. Yes. Tell them to fry the chicken, tell them to cook the cornbread, so you can have dinner when you get back, <laughs> but lead them home. Well you know all <laughs> in that same story. God said it was for you. See, it's, it was it was the ones that was down, that was leaking, that was that was lacking. Yes, the yes. Like those are the ones. Those yes. are the ones you need to take. With Absolutely. You. And that's See, those, those God is going to connect with you. Absolutely. And God is going to do it. Yes. Don't you go and try yes. to pick the people. God is going to speak to you, and He's going to tell you who the people are. And and those are the ones that you when 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 you see them, they're going to be gleaming to you. They're not going to have their own agenda, but they're going to say, "What can we do to help you?" They're going to they're going to hold up your arms. They're going to be on that battlefield with you. They're not going to run back home, you know, when things are not looking good. But they're going to be with you. But God is doing it, and you allow God to do it. Right. Amen. How can the people get in touch with you um, that may be uh, watching um, on television? Uh, most people get in contact with me through Facebook or my phone. Uh, I'm not going to say. Uh, I don't really use um, yeah, um, email. Email yeah. too much, but Facebook and my phone. That's most people get in contact. Most people get in contact with Facebook. Okay. And what's your Facebook page and your phone um, number? Well, my Facebook page is um, Willie Ross, but um, on my Facebook page I have a sweatsuit on with blessed on it, and it's two of them that that's out there. One don't have it, and one does have it. So the one that has blessed on it. Is the one that that that's my Facebook page, but it's Willie Ross, and my phone number is 904-437-3241. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Amen. Glory be to God. And so we bless the Lord because, um, like I said, just with you being here, um, you you must understand that the enemy is going to try to come at you in every direction, but because God have called you to not just be a minister but to be a preacher of the gospel he gives everybody a platform and i was i was telling the uh members of my church um just the other night i told them i said know your voice and know your platform because not everybody's platform is in the pulpit so your platform when you know your voice you will know your platform and that's where you will be able to go at and win souls for the body of christ because it's all about kingdom that's right it is all about kingdom. And so everything that we go through in our life, it is not for us, but it's for the souls that are coming, the people that are coming up behind us. Uh, glory be to God. And so you, you, you have a strategy, you have a plan, and that is to go back to the neighborhoods. And so that's a great thing. And so, there, like I said, there are going to be many people that are going to come forth. You know, because of that, there are going to be many followers that are going to come forth um, because of that. You know, and then when they, as they come in, you take them to your pastor, and you let your pastor be able to teach them and nurture them. You know, because it's the pastors that have the heart That's right. for the people. You know, we go out and we bring them in, and then the pastor, they got the love on them, and right. doctor them up, and clean them up, and all of that good stuff, you know. And so we bless God, because you have the heart of a servant. 
you have the heart of a servant. And so let's talk about that for just a moment, having the heart of a servant. Because you said that you didn't, you know, for a while you didn't have your father, your natural father. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that when you don't have your natural father, that's when Jesus steps in and he fills that gap and he fills that void. Um, so what is it for you that you could say is having the heart of a servant that would uh, really be encouraging to someone else? Well, one of my things right now is, is being not just, not, just a, not just a leader, but just being, I'm not going to say a follower, but being, but being a servant for my pastor. Yes. You know, um, I want to be his armor bearer. Yes. And learning learning how to be an armor bearer, I, I, I studied it before, but there's some things that I have to do it myself to get in that position to be the armor bearer that I want to be for him. Amen. You know, and um, anything that comes comes up or somebody come up to me and say something about this, I need to um, direct you to my pastor. Yeah. So he can talk to you. You know, that that's that's me being the servant that I am. Yeah. And we all have to have, and we all have to look up to somebody. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And tell somebody <clears throat> that, hey, it's somebody else that you have to talk to. Outside of, you know what I'm saying? We talk to God all the time, but we can have somebody that we can go to and sit down and talk with. And I, now I'm not just talking to you, I'm talking to myself because that's some things that I had to learn myself. I mean, and, 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 and speaking on that, that our pride get our way sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I'm a very proud that's one of the things that I have to do as a man of God to get in in the right position that I have to be in to do the things that God has prepared for me to do. And being the man that I have to be for the pastor, I have to humble myself down and do the things that I need know that I need to do to get to where He needs me to be in. Amen. So I thank God for me to each and every day that um since I've been in the ministry. He has been a help. He has talked to me. He has mentored to me. You know what I'm saying? And and I want to be a help to him. So. Amen. Come on, give God some praise for that. Amen. 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 As you were talking about being the armor bearer for your pastor, um, and 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 even having um, that pride, you know, about yourself, I heard the Lord say, "Humble is the way." I heard him say, humble is the way. There are some things that are on your life that God is going to break off of your life and he's going to condition you so that you are that person that you desire to be for God and for your pastor. And I'm telling you, this is the type of people. God looks for those who make themselves available. God looks for them right. for those who um, will put aside their agenda to take on the agenda of their pastor or their leader or their overseer. And you are in the right direction. You are headed in the right direction. To say it's not about uh, Minister Willie Ross, but it's about being a servant to my leader and even admitting I'm not there uh, right now. I'm not there, but by the grace of God, I'm going to get there because we all have to be in a position to be taught. And as long as you have a teachable spirit, you're going to get right where you need to be. And we just thank God because those are the type of people that God can use. Amen, somebody. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So I want to say this to you. Um, I know that you um, you do have uh, a Sunday that uh, your pastor gives you in order to do your testimony service. And, and you mentioned that you have guests, I believe there's four guests that you have that come on. Um, on the on the fourth Sunday of each month, and they give their testimony. Um, but how do you see that expanding? Because it's bigger than what it is. It's going to be bigger than what it is now. I'm glad you asked that. Um, I remember when I first started building a big ministry. I was trying to get seven, eight, ten people to come in, and sometimes I got that many people to come in. You know, um, but it did it be times that you call on people to do things and, and, and life situations come up. Right. And you might not get number one or two. Right. So God um, humbled me. I, literally, God really humbled me. Um, whenever I, and I say that because I felt homeless mm -hmm. five years ago. 
literally I fell home with something that never happened to me before. I could have stayed with other people, I could have done other things, but I chose to do something different with my life. I wanted to I wanted to change my life completely. And I moved in the shop, um, moved in the living Okay. Um moved in the living Um in in the movement, um, it was time that I wanted to give up. I wanted to I wanted this I I don't want to do this anymore. But God wouldn't allow me to give up. And but he humbled me in so many different ways to show me the things that I needed to do for him. And it wasn't about me being homeless. It was about me doing the things that God wanted for me. Yeah. God had to allow yeah. me to go through a change in my life. Yeah. That's even losing my wife, losing everything that I had during that time to get me to a place where I can do the things that he wanted. Then when you're saying about Prisoner of Faith Ministry, I had to get in that position to be able to get this ministry off, off, off the ground again. So God said, poor people. That's all you need. It's poor people. Yeah. I don't want you to get I don't want you to get three. I don't want you to get two. I want you to get poor people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And ever since that time, since from, from the first time, God has made a way out of nowhere. And every time it was poor people. Amen. Not it's one not time that word. God has <clears throat> I mean it's not one time that things had changed. Mm-hmm. Even if somebody didn't come, it was still poor people Amen. because God made a way. Yes. So Amen. I thank God, you know, when, when I, I listen to God and God once God started, you know what I'm saying? Once I started listening to God and knowing who God was in my life, a whole bunch of things changed in my life. Yes. And everybody ain't going the same place you Amen. Amen. Everybody is not going. And God will separate you from some people that you think you needed to be with. Yes. He's going to separate the wheat from the tares. He's going to separate the wheat from the tares. Men of God, we are almost out of time. Um, let the people know again how they can contact you. Give them your Facebook page and your phone number. Yes. Um, this Willie Ross. Um, I have on an uh, army sweatsuit, a white and black and gray army sweatsuit that has blessed across the bottom of it. That is me. You go see another page with, with with the same suit on, but it don't have bless on it. So, and my number is 904-437-3241. Amen. Well, praise God. Let's give this man of God a great big uh, hand of praise. Hallelujah. Listen, we always have more word than what we have time. Yes. And so we definitely want to get you back on our next season um, because we believe that by the time we bring you back on, that it's going to be a greater anointing Amen. because the, the the word of the lord tells us that each round as each round goes higher the the anointing gets greater Amen. and so we believe in that god for you um and for god to send the people from the north the south the east and the west that's going to be able to take on your heart and the vision that god has given you for prisoners of faith ministries Amen, somebody. Glory be to God. Listen, we are coming to the end of our first season of 2020. If you would like to be a guest on an evening with the Apostle, you can reach out to me. I am Apostle Bernadette World, and my email address is VW, V like victory, W like welcome, VW Global Ministries at gmail.com. Or you can contact me by dialing 904. 904- four five four nine three two seven and we will interview you for an evening with the apostle if you would like to sow a donation into the ministry for the furtherance of the gospel you can cash at me at dollar sign apostle world or paypal.me forward slash apostle world i greet you all with the love of christ and i want you all to know that we love you to life. We love you with the love of Christ. God bless each and every one of you. Shalom. Praise the Lord, everyone. I am Apostle Bernadette World of Bernadette World Global Ministries, and I want to welcome you to an evening with the Apostle, and I am the Apostle.